Uh, ladies and gentlemen, a little hiatus. Welcome to Tennis Sucks. We have been uh, traveling a ton. Some of us preoccupied, uh, sick, injured, blah, 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 all of the above. So we're happy to finally be in front of the microphone again and uh, going to recap some shit. Starting with the, uh, obviously, the MLP draft. Yes, the most exciting portion of pickleball uh, was at Woolman Rink in NYC, known as City Pickle now. I don't think I've ever been to a cooler venue. In fact, when I got to New York, I stayed with Julio for four or five nights. Great host, fantastic human being. But beyond that, we walked through Central Park, and I walked a mile out of my way just to see it. And as I was walking up, the bet was with Dion. How many of the courts do you think are open at four o'clock on a Tuesday? What's my guess? Yes. Uh, based on that, I'm going to say zero. Zero. Wow. So she said five. And I was like, okay, I think it's something like 25 courts or 24 courts or something like that. And there were zero. Is it Fucking really 25 courts? I think it's less than that. It might be. It might be like 16. 16. Okay. Yeah, yeah. It's, but it's a shit ton of courts. Yeah. And they were full. Well, I think they're booked out like weeks. They're saying. Yeah, yeah. That it place was, is making a fortune. Oh, I'm sure they are. That, it was that, crazy. That company idea is brilliant. And the skyline in the back is just as pretty as it gets. Uh, such a cool place for a venue or for, a, uh, for an event. It was just, you know, obviously there were some aspects of it that were really, really cool and some that were a little disappointing. Primarily the, you know, the pod that was put on by the Dink and Zane and Jimmy. Like, I think the, just the coverage in general. Yeah, just the coverage in general. Because, yeah. It was, it was poor. Uh, just kind of like, you know, I, I, obviously I'm vested in MLP. Love MLP. Was, was just hoping to see like a, a more pro professional production for such an amazing event. Like to have some media there and all this. And, and, you know, fortunately, nobody's more aware of like the opportunity that was missed there than Julio. And, and I think some, some big changes and, and big improvements are Did coming. they ever actually put it out? I thought they were going to put it out. Like they were going to actually take footage and then yeah, edit they, they it and put it out. They were supposed to be like some documentary thing post post draft, which was a really weird idea because like, you know, you want the hype before the draft. Yeah. Nobody wants it after. And when did you they know do it? Who's, I, I don't even know. You know, it, it was all very jumbled and seemed disorganized. And the, the vision I don't think was exactly spot on. So there's a lot of a lot of moving parts currently. Yeah, I couldn't go and then couldn't watch or see it, which was awful. right. And then if you were watching, you know, guys were talking over it. You're listening to jibber jabber that was not relevant. And oh, it was people horrible. It was horrible. Yeah, <laughs> we basically just were watching people who were nervous about not being drafted <laughs> get drafted. As well. I was nervous <laughs> too. I just wasn't on film. <laughs> yeah. No, you were. Oh, <laughs> they'll get you. Great. <laughs> oh, that's right. Yeah, well, now kind of. All right, so let's talk about our team first, obviously, who yeah. we drafted. Uh, first round, we... So our thought was, before going in, we really wanted Colin Schick. Really wanted Colin Schick. That was, like, our number one Highest goal. Highest upside guy, yeah. It was like, no matter what, we got to figure out how to get Colin. So we kept debating how far down is he going to go, how unknown is he. Uh, we, you know, we thought maybe third round or fourth round, but we, I think, got nervous and decided to go for him second round. And I think the fact is, if we didn't take him second round, we wouldn't have gotten him. Right. And 100%. The, the reason for that is, shout out again to our boys at Hard Eights. They made a uh, tra draft trade pick um, trade with us from, they took our ninth position, we took their 10th position. Their thought was, what's the advantage for us getting one slot higher in the second round? Well, the advantage was we grabbed Colin Schick, and I think they had planned on maybe grabbing him second round, and maybe we bungled them up a little bit with that. Yeah, I think, no, they think, I think they were going to take him third, but it doesn't matter. Oh, third? Third round, yeah. Yeah. Well, but either way, yeah, so our intention was to go um, ideally man, female, man, female, and um, we, we got a little tight in relation to Colin. Certainly really wanted him. So we ultimately took Brendan Long with our first pick at eight. Because he was the best, in our opinion, male available best at that moment. Best male available. And, uh, you know, we're, we're going with this dominant male thing is a really important strategy. But we debated. We weren't, like, oh, stuck no on it. Because you and I went back and forth, back and forth about, should we grab Judith Castillo? Yes. Again, early. She's probably a second round or third round pick. She ended up going, I think, end of second round. Right. But we thought, okay, we know we want Colin second. She's not going to be there in the third round. Let's grab her first. And so we had a long debate about, do we grab Brendan, go for two dominant males, or do we grab Judith, then Colin? And we decided on Brendan and Colin, and you can, you know. Yeah, then, you know, I think, I think there's, there's so, so many schools of thought here. I mean, obviously, as the, um, especially on Challenger for the women, as the list goes down and down, they're less and less proven. 
I also think, however, that there's a larger inflow of women coming into the sport right now than there are men. There's you already, do? Yes. They're both, there's just already so, so many good men, in my opinion. Um, you know, I, I, mean, I could rate probably eight guys that are in Challenger that I think are capable of playing solid in Premier and being quality players. I mean, Callan Dawson, for instance, didn't even get drafted, which I think is ludicrous. So then that art makes the argument that we should have grabbed you to the first round and we would have got a really quality guy in fourth. I'm not, I'm not saying we shouldn't have. That's, that's my point. Is, but I don't think there's dominant men. So I think there's good men. I don't think there's dominant men. And I think that there's only a handful of dominant men available. I think there's men that can play, that can play uh, complementary roles, but I don't think there's ones that can dictate three quarters of the court the way Brendan and Colin are potentially capable of doing. Okay. So, yeah, I mean, I, ideally, I would have liked to go man, female, man, female, because, you know, like we took Dominic, Sha Dominic Schaefer, who's probably our biggest flyer. Uh, you know, she's not proven on the doubles court. She's obviously a very good singles player, was a phenomenal tennis player. We think she has huge upside. And I think one school of thought that's really clear here is every team that's done well in MLP has had a third or fourth rounder that they picked that performed as if they were, you know, a, a first rounder. And we're hoping that Dominic Schaefer is that for us. With that said, you know, I do think there's a large inflow of women coming through. Um, one that I have my eye on in particular that I think is, is making huge strides. Uh, but I've seen a couple other ones online that's like, whoa, she's good. She's making jumps. So, you know, that's the beauty, the beauty of MLP and, and the beauty of, of, of uh, this format is, is there's always going to be moves. There's always going to be trades. And, and while we hope everything goes smoothly and we have a great team and, and it's, it's got great cohesion, uh, we just want to make sure that, uh, you know, we know that there's always, always moves to be made if it's necessary. Yeah. I mean, so when it came to the women, we had a list of who we were looking at. And by the time we got to the third round, that list was dwindled from about 15 down to about four. And so it's tough to pick your third and fourth round ahead of time. Cause you have no idea who's right. going to be available at that moment. And I think, you know, we saw Michelle, we, we know what she brings to the table. She's yep. got the experience. She did well that last season in MLP, got to a final, uh, I think with the Utah Black Diamonds. Correct, so yes. we had to grab her. Yep. Um, hoping, she's got a huge upside. Yeah, hoping she's playing a lot, which she says she is. I don't think she's getting a whole lot of tournaments in before MLP, which I'd like to see that change if possible. And then Dom Schaefer, like you said, uh, was the flyer we went for. She was obviously, I think I heard her scream when she got picked by us oh, really? during the draft. I, I'm pretty sure I heard someone scream. I think it was, Dom, was Dominic Schaefer I also, at the draft. Yeah, she was. I heard her scream when she got picked. Okay, yeah. So it was unexpected for her, I have a feeling, somewhat. My fear with her is that, is she practicing and playing a lot? I know she's been in Peru now for two, three weeks. Mm. But I talked to her last week. She said she's playing four tournaments okay. before uh, September, before Atlanta, and that she's practicing a lot. So, Well, listen, she has the Piccadilly courts to practice on. Yep. And, um, and again, her tennis pedigree is, is as strong as anyone's in the women's is it? field. What yeah. is her pedigree? I know she's, she's like the 25th best junior in the world. What's junior mean? Like what age is that? 18 and under. Okay. So for 18 and under girls, she was the 25th, fifth best girl in the world. I don't is know that, what, that's I, good. I, I want to say I'm mean, 25 in the world. is very, very good. They, they but, have, wow. That's great. They have junior, a list of that. Oh yeah. It's like down to a thousand. And so she traveled the world yes, playing play, tournaments. Played, played under junior 18. grand slams. Like here, I'll, I'll wow, look at Wow. I didn't know that. Right. Like, so well, that looked, that's why I went for her because. I don't know how much she's practicing, but she's clearly a girl. Like when I watch her form and her technique and so forth, to me, it looks like, okay, if that girl puts in time, she's going to be really good. And what after juniors, what happened? That's what she I'm, played a little bit of pro. I think she was considered like a Peruvian tennis yeah, yeah, pro. She, she, she might've been. Um, let me see. I'll, I'll tell you her highest ranking right now. And the, you know, the reason we don't know every stat about every player, maybe we should know more is you're talking about. 25 people you're going to do extensive research on all of them and maybe two of them are available when it comes time to actually pick them yeah. so we know about them we know their recent results but do we know you i mean know, that's pretty good she was 589 in the world in 2019 like that's a that's a quality player that's the top 600 best players in the world that's a good pedigree three years ago yeah four years ago yeah yeah i agree i mean she's obviously good she's already having results in singles Yes. So and she's playing four tournaments, which I did not know. I'm really pumped about yeah, that. No, and one of them she's playing with Colin Chick. If she's playing, she's going to be great. She's playing with Colin in LA. Right. So we get to see them as a team play. Yeah. No, I think of all the females that were there at the end, if you look at pure pedigree, she's got the highest upside. And again, that's kind of the, the, the philosophy we were had going in is let's take the highest upside. Let's go for the gusto here. Like, let's go for the win. And if we have players that play, play really well, we win. And, and, I, and I feel confident with that. And like you said, one of the great things about Challenger is there is 
like pools and drafts in between each event. Correct. If we suddenly don't like one or two of our players, we will not hesitate. Of course not. To that's, grab two that's two the new players. To, this. Yeah, absolutely. So I mean, look at last year. Lacey Schneeman wasn't even drafted. You know, she was a a, 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 sub, a sub for the second event for like one match, and everyone saw her that one match and was like, "Whoa, this girl's got talent." And then, you know, now suddenly she's a premier level player, made the finals with the Hustlers and is, you know, going finals PPAs. And, and she's a full-time player now. And she's, she's a full-time player. Now she's full-time. Yeah. She's going to improve. She's going to be awesome. Yeah. All right. Okay. So, yeah, uh, we're happy about our team. We're very happy, but you don't know until you know. You don't Correct. know until you're there. You see the chemistry. We watch some more results for the next couple months and hope that, you know, they get better and better and we'll be a dominant team. That's the, that's the hope. Yep. Okay, so on to, since you didn't get taken challenger, which most people thought and it was a little bit of a fear there for a minute <laughs> you dropped i think four to six guys further than i thought you should have yep and maybe there's some politics in that um there definitely are i mean one, one team i know for certain was concerned about my ownership uh status with the florida smash yeah so yeah. which which stinks because yeah. but you know what for you it's a benefit because i but, call i call it like the the tyler loom effect <laughs> the, the further down you get drafted, in essence, the better team you're on. You become a flyer in essence, right? If I think you're a third round player, I think you're like a late second round, early third round player, and you don't go till middle of fourth round, that in essence makes you a flyer, in my opinion. I, I, I was happy that I dropped. I think I was really fortunate to go onto a great team. Yeah. Because um, you get on a better and better course, team. The, fur, a, the, further the further down you get drafted, the right. better team you're on, in essence, right? Yeah. And like, I'm pretty sure like I'm not going to go 0 and 5 and mix like the person you mentioned prior. Like, I think I'm going to do a little bit better than that. So, you know, I, I'm, I'm pretty excited to play with Georgia and. And I think I'm, uh, I'm heading on to a, a really solid team. Like, of course, the lower you go, you know, you might get to play with Ben Johns, Riley Newman, J.W. Johnson, Annalie Waters. Like, those are the things you get if you drop really low. I love your team. Me too. I think your team loves your team. <laughs> um, I also like your owner. Yeah, Tim is awesome, man. Super passionate. Uh, great guy. You know, I think he felt which I was flattered with. I think he felt like he got a good value for me on the fourth round, which I think is about right. You know, I think I'm a, probably a mid third round guy at the moment. So for me to drop uh, to where I was and was, was, I don't know if I was necessarily surprised, but I was, I was happy about it. At the end of the day, it was like, sweet. I get, to, I don't have to be the, the numero uno male. I can just be a solid player and, and now maybe even play two mixed with Georgia. Like shit, we're a pretty damn good 1A, 1B mixed team, you know, so, uh, you know, our team with the ranchers is myself and Georgia, Dylan and, um, and Lauren Stratman and Lauren Stratman, my opinion, like the most improved female over the last six months. Holy shit. Like her upswing lately has just been incredible. She's playing great, super confident, looks like a different player to me. She looked so insecure on the court for whatever reason, eight, 10 months ago. She literally looks like she has full belief in herself now. Maybe that's like her relationship with Julian, him and him practicing with her all the time. I don't know, but she has full belief that she is a badass player and she's playing like one. So uh, I, also, I've, I've never played with someone quite as good as Dylan. I got I just had to play with JW the first season last year, but I, I don't think I've played with somebody that's uh, you know can play right, play left, that I can mix around with, that's as strong and dominant on both sides as he is. So I'm really really excited about that opportunity. Yeah, I think you have a, a really good team. One of my favorites, I would say. You're a top three team. Yeah. Uh, great chance to win it. Great chance to be in the playoffs every time. So, And the ranchers need it, right? Like, they, they definitely need yeah, some wins. Yeah, they did great in Challenger. So um, this is, this is going to be a big one for them. Yeah. What's I'm your, excited. Are you, besides yourself, what's the, what's the team, I would say, that got drafted that you're most worried about being the Well, I actually think the, the, uh, the Chicago Slice didn't have a great draft. Yeah, but but the thing is, they have been. So I still rate them as the best team because the guy is, you know, that good. But, you know, looking at him and Eric, I think is is a formidable pairing, obviously, anyone he plays with. But Eric likes to get a little bit more involved than maybe Tyler or Colin does. So it creates a larger target to maybe go after. Uh, there's a few more errors. You know, Tyler and Colin are both very, very steady, very solid players. Uh, Eric's a little bit more, a little bit more uh, offense-oriented, so maybe a few more errors coming there. And then... Jesse and Lacey will be interesting. You know, who knows how they're going to pair. Jesse's obviously super solid, very stable. So the Slice is your other favorite team? That's the Slice. Your... The Slice. And then, um, yeah. I mean, to be honest, that's, that's my second favorite team. And then, you know, you got to go with Riley's team with the Kawamotos. Like, Al Alshon's a weird pick to me in the fourth one. I thought they would, re you know, grab someone maybe a little bit more solid. But, you know, obviously a huge upside guy. 
Uh, the Kawamoto's just won Beer City, so them as the women's team, very from They're always pairing. good. They're always good. And they're good in mixed, and, and they're good, good in singles. And, like, Riley's just good. So I think you know, that was the same philosophy we used for the challenger. If you have guys that are super dominant, they really have a huge impact on three matches. Men's doubles, mixed and mixed. So, uh, yeah, I still give the edge on the best teams to Riley's team and Ben's, Ben's team, team. Wow. just because they're that good. Wow. Anna, Anna Lee is obviously probably pound for pound the best player in the world, but I don't think she has the capability of having the same dominance simply because she plays the female role. Yeah. So uh, the big surprise I think most people are talking about is uh, Rachel Rohrbacher. Yeah. Pretty much unknown name, not really playing many events, and gets picked up premiere. Yeah, so Anna is, was very high on her. Funny enough, Anna, Anna, Bright. Anna actually called me that morning tell, talking about how nervous she was. I wasn't nervous one bit, but she was like, I'm pacing. James is still asleep, but I'm pacing back and forth. And she had the intention of taking me third round as far as I knew. Uh, she was, and she had it down right. She's like, I think Orlando's going to trade for me, uh, trade up, and then I'm going to pick either, either Deckel, Andre, or AJ, second round, you third round, and then Lacey fourth was what she thought. But then she liked Rachel too, who was obviously also on her board. And when that third round came around, I don't think the Davos, Dave, what is it? What's the, the Orlando squeeze? DeVos. DeVos, excuse me. DeVos family was too keen on my Florida Smash ownership, which that's fine, totally understandable. And I think Diescu preferred Zane to me. So they ended up ultimately going with Zane in the third round. Um, but yeah, when I heard Rachel, I wasn't surprised because. Anna had talked about how she'd been watching her and she thinks there's huge upside there. She played at South Carolina, was a very quality college player, and it sounds like has, has a, a solid trajectory. Well, here's the interesting fact about Rachel. I started looking her up. She's from this area, huh. right? From Tampa. Okay. She's actually going to come on our pod next week cool. if you're here. Holy shit. She's going to be here. She wants to get some practice time in if you have the availability, but wants, to come, on our, wants to come on our pod. And, Damn, um, that's great. So I... I'm, I'm DMing her. I'm saying, hey, you know, come out and practice. Come out and do our pod. And then I give her my number. She texts me. I have a long chain from the last three years texting her. No fucking way. Already knew her. No way. So I say, she's the first person I ever took lessons from. Holy shit. When I first started playing pickleball that three years hysterical. ago. And I'm like, you know I took lessons from? She's like, yeah, are you an idiot? Like, of course I remember you. <laughs> Yes, he's was, a fucking idiot. <laughs> I, I was wondering why you're asking for my number. We, we, That's hysterical. <laughs> yeah. So what I are took, the odds of that? So I know her. Now that okay. I know, and I know her, I know exactly who she is. She is an awesome teacher, awesome person, and a bulldog, and she's going to be a, well, a great Well, that's what, that's what Anna kept commenting on, that she's got that dog. And oh, she's yeah, got she does. Fight, Even know, teaching, so. she was yeah. like, Feisty. hey, yeah, like, that's awesome. quit being well, a hey. bitch and fucking hit the ball better. <laughs> Love that. <laughs> Love that. So, you know, hey, kudos to her. I hope she performs great, just not against uh, the ranchers. <laughs> but uh, yeah, love your team. She's the surprise, and hopefully we have her here next week on the pod, and we'll get uh, more info about if she was surprised cool. that she got picked. You want to uh, do a recap of the Beer City? Well, let's talk about the worst teams really quick. Oh yeah, let's do that. You want to do that? Well, <laughs> no, nah, we won't do that. We'll leave. Everyone that. already has the bouncers. Everyone says is the bouncers, and the reason I don't want to is because I love their ownership group. Yeah. No, I, don't, I don't want to shit on people. It's I'm a big right. fan of them, and it is what it is, man. Yeah, maybe there's some bad drafting. Yeah. It's, well, of course there is, and, but you never know. Like, in hindsight, I think we could have done a better job in Challenger. I'm sure everyone has those, those uh, beliefs, but, you know, that's the way it goes. And, and everybody and has we'll different see. motivations on how they draft. Correct. Some people are looking for marketability. Yeah. They're not looking to win. They're looking is, who do I, do I have the most marketable players that is going to get us the most exposure while playing MLP? I think the bouncers are going to do fine, by the way. I don't, I don't think they're going to be bad. I think they're, they're going to be just fine. I don't think they're a great team. Oh, then, who, means, then but, who's the worst team drafted? Now I want to know. <laughs> oh, the Brooklyn, Brooklyn Aces. <laughs> Oh, oh, gotcha. Hayden and Tyler, that's uh that's one that I don't have I don't think will I mean can play well, but I don't I don't think Hayden and I love you Hayden man, but I don't think dominant males there yet on the reg. Um and then, you know, we we all know my other thoughts. Great. So you bail on him in the tournament this weekend and then shit on him as a dominant male. Well, it's mostly because after Samin, he gets second in Samin second. is a guy I really like to shit on and that's their GM <laughs> and I do love you Samin, but so at the draft I walk in the first person I see when I walk in is... When you walk into the draft... The first person I see is... No idea. Jimmy Miller. The oh, no. very large Jimmy <laughs> Miller. I fucking V-line right for that guy. 
And I'm like, he was one of the guys on the uh, pod. Yeah, that yeah he's the crappy. guy with Tyler that called me a tool. And I'm like, hey man, first guy I've ever met that hasn't that called me a tool without meaning. What's up, motherfucker? And <laughs> I gave did? him like a huge wow. hug, huge, and he liked it. Like Jimmy, I have no problem with you. I have no problem with Tyler. I just want to make that really clear. You know, I have one problem, and that is people that don't play fairly. I'll leave it at that. Other than that, on a personal level, you guys talk all the shit you want. You guys have as much fun as you want. I'm all good with it. Just leave personal shit out, or you know, we'll, we'll have more talks. <laughs> All right, so Beer City recap. Uh, you man, didn't, you didn't play. Sing, I, I couldn't play. Uh, I was at my dad's memorial, which fucking sucked. Uh, had a horrible time, so I couldn't go, which I was bummed about because Andrea Coop asked me to play, and I would have loved to play with her in She's her tournament. She's the host. It's amazing. She's the host. And, it's my favorite tournament, by I, the way. Dude, such a fun tourney. Like, that was literally, that was the most fun I've had, and I played, well, I should say most fun I've had, but at, like, an actual normal event. That was the most fun I had last year when we went. That's where we met Nicholas Baggs. We we That's where you beat Julian thing. Arnold. Correct. And, and yeah. Yeah. Awesome event. So I was going to play with Andrea. And, and Andrea, like, I feel like she's warmed to me so much over the last eight months, which I love because initially, you know, I don't think she was a very big fan of me last year, like when I first started playing the original MLP. And over time, like, you know, whatever, our UCLA Bruin connection, just a, a, a friendness to some friendship to some extent has formed. You should play and, some doubles with her. I will. You know, there's no question. Um, but yeah, so I was bummed to miss that one. And but yeah, the singles final. Let's just talk about that really quick. On both sides. Ridicu Tyra Black. Ridiculous. I don't know why she was falling down every point. Oh, that, that was so that weird. Was ridiculous in a different way. Yeah. That was what is what that? The hell is that at all? I have no explanation. I have no explanation. Does that happen in tennis? Is no. that a thing? Fuck no. So weird. What is that? I couldn't tell you. This here's my guess. You wanna hear my guess? You're gonna love this. I have a theory on it. Huh. So do you remember when I used to have problems playing tournaments with my sho my Babolat shoes? Okay. They would cause like this tendon problem all right. around the ankle and it gets worse as you play. Yeah. I think her shoes are pressing on some ligament or tendon in Maybe. her ankle and it's causing pain and basically and a lack falls. of stability and like you keep rolling so you don't roll it. Well, I think she is, is like laying down to stop putting to pressure stop. on it. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, that's possible. So, hey, Tyra, if you're hearing this, try testing out some shoes that don't press on your ankles in certain spots around the collar of the shoe. That might be the fix. That happened to me for about six months, and then I figured out it was a shoe change. Good as new, never came back again. Okay, and then what about the men's singles? The best match. It might be one of the best singles matches I've ever watched. Dude, that, that was our biggest miss, to be honest, that we didn't have him on the board, is Jaume Martinez Vic. We didn't even look at him. He's on the board. I didn't have him on the board. We had him on the board. Well, if We, we did, had Andre then, Mick, then, we had Vic. Then and I overlooked him because, to me, that guy is... Really, really, really good. And we had Livernese. And I will tell you that I think, uh, based on him, I think the Hustlers have the best team in Challenger. He played against, who was in the final? Against Connor Garnett. Yeah. And man, that's two fast guys, both with two handers that can roll it, drive it line, crafty points. That was a super fun What's match his to tennis watch. background? You know, I guess he was a super good junior in Spain, one of the top juniors in the country, which means, you know, he's playing on clay. Great endurance, really crafty, a lot of shots. It's kind of different than being really good as a 14-year-old here, you know, for a variety of reasons. But as a 14-year-old there, you have to be very crafty. And, uh, and then I, I think, you know, he's small, maybe phased out a little bit, played at University of Hawaii Pacific, and, you know, was a formidable quality college player, and now obviously has dedicated himself to pickle. So yeah. injuries, we've, well, I mean, well, yeah, go ahead, Travis. You had Injuries, yeah. I mean, they came out with the stat that, like, you know, orthos are loving pickleball because it's costing $400 million and and uh, McAfee, that podcast, he put out something that like, you know, oh, there's, there's really something to this and it's total bullshit. Like do the numbers. It's 40 million people playing, you know, and you're saying don't play pickleball. Like think about how many things that pickleball is curing, obesity, depression, all of these factors that aren't being calculated that are worth billions and billions of dollars, much less 400 million. Who gives a shit about 400 million? And if you do the calculation, it's like $10 a person based on the amount of people that are playing. Like if you're telling me that you shouldn't play for $10, that's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. Play pickleball as much as you can. Enjoy it as much as you can. Have as much fun as you can. Don't worry one bit about the injury. Fuck the injury. You can get like, injured doing anything. Exactly. You yeah. can get injured. Like, I, I was stretching the other day and, and got injured. Like, this shit happens. But I, I tell you what, man, like, even seeing that, like, people trying to come out with yeah. these ludicrous claims bothers me because... All I watch when I think about pickleball is how much fun people have and how it changes people's lives. That's it. That's all I see. And actually to think about it, how many injuries happen out here, it's not that bad. No. Like if I'm out here, there might be, I might see one injury every two weeks and nothing really severe. I haven't yeah, seen any really nagging injuries. Like there are things that come from playing a ton. Yes. But you're getting so much 
exertion and, and joy out of it. Like if you go run every day, for instance, you're going to get injured too. You have knee problems or ankle yeah. problems at some point. Go play basketball every day. You're going to get injured. Play tennis every day. You're going to get like that's a part of sports in general. Pickleball is not the culprit. Agreed. Agreed. Yeah, but that, the reason we brought up the injury thing is because at Beer City, and I guess you didn't see it. I was just I telling you about it. it uh, Jesse Irvin got hit in the head, the forehead, with a pickleball. Right. And had to pull out of that match. And the following day, because this is what I've heard, she didn't pass concussion protocol. Okay, I didn't know that there was a concussion protocol for pickleball. <laughs> There is, apparently, there apparently is. there is. I don't know if it's a rumor. I haven't heard this firsthand, but okay, I, I know nothing about the story. The only, I'm going to clarify this. The only thing I can say is Graham told me about this when I walked up. I thought he was joking. <laughs> I, I thought, thought they were was, joking too. I thought he was Luke, telling did a joke. Did you hear this also? I, I am sorry, convinced I the that there's no speed at this point that a wiffle ball can hit me in the head and will cause a concussion. It's she, possible. She did get hit hard. I want to say that. Sure, it was very hard. It was hard. And we're like, going to show the clip. Like, we're going to show the clip. Like, like blindness the clip. <laughs> in the eye, maybe. Like that That I could see. Maybe hit your nose, Dead breaks your nose. Dead center forehead. Dead center forehead. <sighs> but. And it was warm in Beer City. Like if it was like 40 degrees, maybe. But I, I'm, not, I'm not sure about that one. My take is if there is a concussion protocol, there's, there's no way that Jesse didn't want to keep playing, getting hit in the head with a pickleball. I know her. She's right. playing. She's feisty. So they, they, if, if that's the real reason, they literally told her she can't play. Yeah. There's no way that and she would And Jesse, not, I'm not calling, calling you out at all. I'm just saying, like, I don't get it. So if there's some clarification and you can clarify it for me, I'd love that because I don't, I don't understand what happened. So please let me know. On that same note, how about Jesse Irvin's single performance? Holy shit. Holy cow. Semis. That's Chopping the story up, of Beer City. That is the story of Beer City. So Chopping you, up <laughs> Judah Castillo. <laughs> Who's just been on fire lately? Just beat Leia, and then makes semis. Almost makes it to the final. Oh, she had it. She had the I semis heard. match too. I, she had two. She had a couple of good wins. But yeah, Jesse, congrats, man. I, I loved watching you play singles. Glad you did it. Getting ready for MLP. I yeah, love it. Congratulations, love it. Jesse. That was now awesome I wish to we'd have gone to more Dream Breakers when we had her on the team. <laughs> <laughs> or you just played like that in the Dream Breakers. Come on, man. Uh, now that you're, you've got your injury, Travis, you're, you're going to miss playing with uh, Hayden. Yeah, so I had a really freak injury. I went to a stretch place. I can't really say which one at the moment, but a stretch place. And the gentleman that was stretching me was doing essentially like a, an assisted pigeon stretch with me on my back. And my left knee just went pop, 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 like that. I mean, loud, obnoxious. I've never had a pop like that in my life. Didn't know what, went, what was wrong. Uh, didn't even feel pain at the moment. Just felt odd. By that night, I couldn't straighten it, or I couldn't bend it, excuse me. Got an MRI the next day. I have minor tears in my three ligaments, MCL, ACL, and parongus lateris. Whoa. Uh, so all, all pretty, pretty serious strains, and am not able to really do shit for a couple of weeks. So yeah, I, I was really bummed because I was Which playing knee with is it? my left. Was playing um, uh, Seattle with Hayden Patrickwin, and I don't think I had... Looked forward to kind of hyping anybody up more because I just kind of love his little swag and the way he carries himself. And I think he's playing unbelievable, great hands. So I was very excited to kind of, you know, just, just bro him out a bunch. And, 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 you know, so anyway, that was really hard for me to, to pull out of. I was very, very upset making that, that text to him saying, hey, man, I can't play because, you know, this freak accent that's never happened. So, yeah, I didn't play that. I'm not playing Takea. Sorry, not playing Seattle, not playing Takea in Newport Beach after in uh, oh, Orange wow. County. The next tournament for me is TOC, uh, Turn of Champions. I'm playing with Rob Nunnery and Lacey Schneeman. Wow. Yeah, so really stoked on Schneeman. Uh, Leia and I are going to try some other partners out. We kind of had some stagnant results over the past few events and just weren't really making the progress that we wanted to make. So we both felt it was in our best interest to try some other things. Do you know who she's going with from this point on? Federico Staxroot. Oh, wow. Yep. So Fetty was supposed to play with Megan Dizone. I think dropped her for the events and uh, is now going to try to play with Leia. That's interesting. Yep. Who's Megan playing with? I don't know yet. Oh. We, we've been communicating a bit, but... Oh, really? Yeah. That's interesting. Yeah, so after that one, then I have Kansas City. And I got Jade Kawamoto and AJ Kohler. Nice. And I do love playing with AJ just because I get to talk shit to him while we play and it's always very fun. I thought that same thing would happen with enjoyable. you and Hayden in all honesty. 
That we would talk shit to each other while we played? Oh, for yeah. sure we would. Like, he's definitely going to call you old man. Oh, 100%. And you're going to talk to him short. about, like, yeah, short and, you know, did you get your homework done tonight? Right. And- <laughs> Bunch of stuff like that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it would have been a lot of fun. Damn. So I'm, I'm hoping I get another shot with him. But he's he's a pretty hot commodity at the moment, man. So, you know, I mean, his draft slot was high. Damn. Yeah. So we'll see. Do we want to talk about your sickness? I mean, we can. No, we- no, we'll leave it. Graham, I mean, we'll just say Graham couldn't come to the draft because of a very serious case of pneumonia. We're all very concerned about his well-being. So wish Graham well in his recovery hey, and comeback, his pickleball comeback. I've been, I've played the last three nights, so I I'm haven't. somewhat back. You're back. But um, yeah, my first time out of the hospital. It, I, I put it on record. I hate the hospital. Yeah, it's a scary place. And I gotta just give one shout out. Like again, we went for five days to New York City. Uh, Julio Di Pietro, our new CEO amazing how much this guy's working man 12 13 hours a day on the phone like it's <laughs> i kid you not it's crazy dude like the guy is obsessed with making this work and making the league what we all want it to be uh the meetings he's taking the people he's talking to very high level stuff that i am i'm just baffled by but you know the way that guy conducts himself the humbleness that he walks with given his stature not physical stature obviously julio uh but you know his status in other no, ways his physical stature is humble too it's very very humble <laughs> but in other ways, the guy is super humble, gracious, uh, couldn't have been a better host, you know, happy to call him a friend. And yeah, Julio, we, we can you get blast. us a better draft pick? Is there, I mean, no one's actually present for those drawings out of that little bubble with Brooks, are they? I don't know. I'm sure man. they're rigged. Why, can we rig us something better than ninth pick? Just once. Once. I, I mean, that's, we're literally the worst pick in the draft two times in a row now. No, yeah, that's not what they said. Snake draft has the best chance. Remember, that's what they said. <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right. Well, thank you guys. Glad we're back. Uh, thank looking you. Looking forward to next week. Thanks for dealing with my little one. <laughs> Tennis sucks, pod. Tennis sucks. Get Sunday the hell out swagger. Of here. See ya. Oh, yeah. Sunday swagger. No more Selkirk. Only Sunday, baby.